Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's me again, Dwayne Dixon. And I'm your host of Success of a Nation. Now, I recently had the pleasure of interviewing a young lady. Um, and she's from Guam, so I didn't want to mutilate her name, but um, Aya is her first name, which is easy enough. Aya Kanahawi. I'm hoping I got that right. I hope I did you some justice on that. But uh, she's the founder of Layman Creative. She's a creative uh, consultant and a visual storytelling strategist, among many other things. And you'll find that out during the interview. So check it out. But um, what that means at the end of the day is she just tells emotional stories that connect and resonate with her clients customer base and uh, as entrepreneurs I think we could all use that so I'm certainly going to give her a call I think you should probably give her a call but um, we had a few technical difficulties so doing the interview via zoom presented a few challenges so I figured I would just get on and make the normal introduction and then just go to the zoom call that way so without further ado i guess um i'll fade out and fade in to my interview with aya enjoy i've got aya of uh lehman creative she's a creative consultant online consultant uh her specialty is building an audience online through i guess the many platforms or what have you or i guess you have your specialties we'll dive into that soon enough and um i'm also saying that you um specialize in visual storytelling so it's not just um marketing as we know it you're you you're taking it into a different a different area it seems so uh, I'm really looking forward to digging into all of that. And, and just to be completely transparent with you, um, I'll be taking notes because uh, the stuff that you're saying is right down my alley and what I, exactly what I need right now, Aya. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Um, this has been, I feel like, a my life's work, I guess, if you will. Um, I never thought of myself as being a marketer or a public figure, um, mm -hmm. but hey, we're here. I'm just um, answering the call, so. Okay, well, thank you again for that. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking of that, you said you didn't, um, you didn't see yourself going down this path. Uh, success of a nation is all about um, showing people different paths that they may not have seen otherwise. And that's why I thought it would also be uh, good to have you on because, um, you know, with people pivoting with uh, the pandemic and things of that nature, um, your story could enlighten or help many, you know? So I say all that, Aya, to also um, ask, how did you get started? I got started off, um, I'm actually really my first life love of just creativity was dance. And I wow. had dreams of being a professional ballet dancer. Wow. Um, I was set okay. to go to NYU. I was going to go to Juilliard. Like I had all these dreams, all these passions. Um, things didn't quite work out. Mm -hmm. um, it's a whole different story. So I will, I'll save <laughs> the time today. We'll save that one for another time. Yeah, for another time. But okay. um it was beautiful because it led me to another creative uh, love of mine, which was filmmaking, um, but not filmmaking in terms of me being in the director's chair. I think where a lot of people probably might think of themselves to be, which is not a bad thing, but I actually mm -hmm. being more behind the scenes person, how I said before, I never vision, envisioned myself being like in front of the camera. Right. Um, I was, I'm still very much of a private person. Um, so screenwriting was really my, my love, like my passion. And Good so man. I started off as a writer. Mm. Um, so 
studied um, studied screenwriting, um, was just enamored with the whole blending of like the art and science of like how to put an actual story together that is going to be relayed on the screen for people to visually experience. Right. And right. that's something totally different um, than like, you know, typically just being like, I'm a writer, I'm a novel writer, or I'm a copywriter. Like it's a very, you know, specific style of writing. And that's kind of where all this blossomed from. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Well, you're talking to my core because I too am a screenwriter. I'm a filmmaker. I have three <laughs> films already. And um, so for, to hear you, when I when I saw that, I said, okay, I've, I've got to get her on. I've got to get her <laughs> on. We've got a, a lot of commonalities that we could probably discuss outside of even the marketing, you know? So, yeah. so that's, so how exactly did the, uh, the filmmaking uh, turn into, you know, uh, come into where you are now? Yeah, so it's funny because I, I guess maybe like the past three years, I have been on that journey of navigating how did this all come to be? And I just feel like I just leaned into what I love to do, which is being able to just share story, but I want to do it in a, in a visual medium that people can experience outside of right. just picking up a book and reading it. Right. Um, although I'm a big, I'm a bookworm, self-proclaimed. I know everybody doesn't always um absorb information the same way right and right. I always notice although I haven't been in a movie I haven't sat physically in a movie theater for a year <laughs> it's heartbreaking yeah, as it most sounds of us have it, right right um been definitely doing the whole you know at home streaming and you know Amazon and Netflix HBO stuff. Max right yeah <laughs> all those things um but I think about the times when I used to be in a theater and just the impact that those visuals had on me, like you're in a dark room for the most part, you know, dim lighting and it's all eyes on the screen and you can't help but just be moved through the storyline with so many emotional connections as you are placing yourself in the whether you view yourself as the hero or the villain, because sometimes right. we do a little bit of both. <laughs> right, but putting yourself in their, in their situation nonetheless. Exactly. And I say that to say because I feel like regardless, like we're, we're all layered, we're all very like complex people as humans. Like I don't really think of like we're just like, there's just one way to be like, we're all very multifaceted. So in right. some way, shape or form, like you may be viewed as the villain, but maybe you were just being proactive in your life and just standing firm in what you believe in. And maybe you were being a villain to somebody else who is in opposition of you. So I'm just there saying that to just be holistic. Go. Right. <laughs> but I love how like that type of energy and just how like all just the impact you make in a visual medium by watching a film, which led me to creating visual stories for brands who want to be able to have that impact as watching like a feature film yeah. in a way that makes sense for their, their online business. Okay. Okay. Now getting into that, what does, what does that look like? I mean, I've seen many examples of storytelling that people use for, uh, you know, social media or, you know, to, for marketing, if you will. Um, what exactly does, does your medium look like? I mean, how, can you walk me through that a bit? Yeah, I'm all about looking at things from a holistic standpoint. So I definitely don't go in and just do, um, I think I get what you're saying, where like there's different types of storytelling where people will just start revealing things about them. And it'll be kind of, um, I don't want to say randomized, but like just people will just like, say like take a platform like Instagram, for instance, although I don't specialize in Instagram, but we do mm -hmm. integrate that into like whatever campaign we're going to be rolling out. Right. Um, when you look at like an Instagram grid, it's like three blocks of space. And typically it's like some people have it to where they have have a very nicely beautiful curated element of like certain parts in their offer or just in their value prop or just whatever that they're, whatever their service is to their ideal market. Right. Um, and then every now and again, they may drop in bits and pieces of like what I call humanizing themselves. Okay. Um, but I actually specialize in actually amplifying the human aspect of their brand and not just being like a little speck here and there. Because when you look at a brand, typically it's like, you don't really know the people behind it. You don't really know their story. You don't really know right. how they got started. It's like their products may look nice and pretty and flashy. And they're telling you the benefits of that, how that product can help you solve a problem. Right. 
but I don't really know, like, well, emotionally, should I be investing in, in this? Like, are they in alignment with how I see myself outside of this product? Like, are the people... I mean, are they real life people that I would want to be friends with? Like all that type of stuff. So I, I specialize more in like humanizing and bringing more of like the spiritual and emotional connection that a lot of brands, I think, are trying to get a grasp on and trying to really add more to their brand and bringing more life to their story, as opposed to just, you go to their website and we have an about page or a store or our story. And it's like three paragraphs and it's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's cool. But I don't really connect on that. Right. No, I get it. I get it. What comes to mind for me is, uh, you know, with me having a a sales background, uh, among other things, um, the one thing that they always say is that you, um, in order to connect with people, it's, it's you that they're, they're buying into, not always the, the headphones or, whatever it is that you're selling it's it's really you you know so i i think that's where what you're saying really comes into play so you amplify that basically yes mm-hmm. okay exactly. okay good deal good deal um another thing i noticed is that you you specialize in youtube marketing as well you so youtube is sort of a specialty for you yeah, because although I consider myself just very, um, I mean, it's videos, obviously, just it makes sense. Like, obviously, still images and photography, as much as I love photography, I have so much respect and love for like the art of photographers. Um, wow. Video is just really where I just love, I love motion. I love just to be able to capture different angles. Um, I'm not a professional cinematographer, but I, love like the cinematic eye when I look at certain video content and so YouTube really was just the natural progression of things where it's like well if I'm going to be helping a business bring their story to life in a visual visual video medium then YouTube was just the natural way and because the power of it and just being able to really reach your audience and get get in front of the ideal people that you want to reach it just makes it makes sense okay okay and when I and I, I certainly get that part. Um, what I was thinking about was more in line with, um, you know, YouTube ads and how do I get more views and the thousand hours and the 4,000 views in order to monetize. And that's, that's one of the things that I'm dealing with right now as a, as a fairly new podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, those are some of the things that I'm trying to work out as we speak, Aya. And, you know, I wanted to know what your thoughts were on that. Is that your lane also, or do you specifically stick with the visuals? No, we do both because my thing is like, it doesn't really make sense for me to create this like Michael Bay or Steven Spielberg production level video if nobody sees it. (laughs) That's right. You definitely right. have to have a strategy to actually get it out there in front of the right people. And so, yes, leveraging either, you know, an organic strategy, like if you intend to just build up momentum and build more of an audience organically and, you know, just leveraging the power that YouTube unlocks with that. Um, but for instance, say um, you just want to accelerate that process or you may be a little bit more advanced, that's when we can turn on some ads and be able to tap into the power of like actual paid advertising um, that YouTube okay. offers. So it's a little bit of both. Okay, I see, I see. Um, with that being the case, can you can you expound on like maybe what some people could uh, do in a position like mine? Yeah. Well, for for starters, I would say um, this is where the deep thinking comes into place when you're planning out what exactly you want. Um, and this is what, yeah, I would actually walk through this, like say, for instance, I was working like one-on-one with a client, but some quick wins here would just be mapping out what exactly it is that your ideal audience that you want in form of a viewer or a subscriber to your channel, what's in it for them or what do they want? And that way you know how to create the content that will, like you said, draw them to you. And that way you can be you know, the person that helps them walk over that bridge to get that solution that they're after. Right. Um, secondly, I would say it's, again, and I, I feel like I don't want to sound like 
like a uh what's that bird that parrots are is it a parrot that echoes everything you say yeah um, parrot, right? I, is it a parrot okay um mm -hmm. where it's like you hear like people keep saying the same thing it's like okay like are we going to keep saying the same things like well it's true consistency um and it's just what it is youtube is all about consistency i know it can be a pain a little bit sometimes if you feel like you're a little bit time starved or you just i don't know you just feel overwhelmed i know i know youtube is a little bit can be a little bit scary can be a little bit like i don't know if i can do this because it is a high a little bit higher barrier to entry because there's production involved um yeah. i'm not saying you have to have a 4k red camera to be successful you. <laughs> but right, right. you have to have a setup and establishment and a system that you can be consistent with because consistency it rewards you yeah and those are probably the two biggest things i see um that people can get started with to really get you know that quick momentum that helps build wherever they want to go right. um but i feel like those are two of the major hurdles that a lot of people can come over can overcome that yeah. you know maybe in more of the infancy stages i think those are great points honestly um and that is a problem that a lot of people have you know we hear consistency all the time I've got it coming out of my ears, and yet it is very difficult for me to be consistent. It just is. Um, first of all, you know, it's like uh, you, you, you question whether or not it's even worthy of putting out there, you know, and then you, and then I know for me, even though I'm somewhat gregarious, you know, at times, um, I don't know. It's still just difficult for me to step outside of that and put it all out there, you know, and I keep getting on myself. I'm like, you know, I'm a filmmaker. I'm like, Dwayne, can you choose something that just doesn't put your entire being on, you know, in front of everybody? Is there anything that you can do? <laughs> anything that interests me generally is going to wind up in one way or another with me having to put myself out there. Even this video we're doing, now I'm being transparent. I I, I don't know nothing. I, I'm trying to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I'm get still, it. Yeah, yeah. I totally get it. I totally get it. Yeah, no, you are, yeah. I mean, I feel like everything you do is an, is an extension of, I mean, what's that quote that's saying, art is an extension of life? Right. So it's, right. yeah, it, it just makes sense. I guess at some way, some point in time, yes, your essence. Art imitates be, life. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Which is why it's more important, like like I said before, is like you understand what exactly you're getting out of this and who are you reach, looking to reach. That way, at least your time is not going to be just thrown like throwing spaghetti at the wall. Like we're just going to create, just to create something. And then it's like, we don't know how to measure it. Did, that, did it work? Did it not? Well, where were we going? It's like having a map. We're not, ha not having a map, but then trying to figure out where to go eat dinner, but you didn't have a plan to get to the restaurant. So it's like, it's right. kind of circular. Yeah, yeah. And you saying that uh, draws me to another point, um, the importance of knowing your avatar or who your avatar is. And once again, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm trying to work that out. Now I know in film, and uh, my, my, my audience was generally women. No matter what I did, I try to encourage the guys. Guys, remember, I'm writing from a male perspective. You can come check. Always women. So I made a point to say, here on out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write with you in mind. And I'm working on an IP right now with another partner of mine. And um, I'm, I'm working on a, a film or IP where the woman is the heroine. You know, she's the lead. And so in film, I, I had it down. You know, it, I, I was right where I needed to be. With this, success of a nation being about business, how do I narrow business down to male or female? How you know what I mean? So that's been one of the the things I've had to deal with and wrestle with, if you will, 
as to like, okay, who is my avatar? You know, um, I, you know, business in my mind is across the board is male or female. Um, do you have anything uh, to enlighten me on, you know, with, with that being said? Yeah, I'm glad you brought this up because I feel like I've, I've been um, not battling, but I've had some pretty heated, um, very good spirited debates about this very topic with my marketer friends. <laughs> okay, okay. And um, I think for the, for the longest time, the industry is very heavy on demographics, which is what mm -hmm. you said, spoke to whether your ideal client avatar is male or female, that they live right. here, they make this amount of money, are they a parent, are they this, right. like all these little things. My specialty is actually more so tapping into the psychographic of your ideal audience and speaking them, speaking. What, you, them, wait, what, what are you tapping into, Aya? What, what is that? The, the psychographics? Psychographics. Okay, okay. <laughs> we can delve into that. So for me, I feel like that is just where I shine because I just want to speak to people where they are, no matter what, you know, fixtures may be in their life. So if somebody's based in Miami versus San Diego, that's not really relevant. It's relevant in some capacity, but for me, I'm speaking to, well, what brings them together emotionally? Like what's like mm -hmm. the deeper want that they're all yearning for regardless of their geographical location. And that's kind of where I like to like to live. Okay. Um, so okay. that, that would be more so of, um, not negating the importance of you said if, if you're speaking to with a certain ideal person in mind but i like to go a little bit deeper like okay but what does this person actually want outside of who they may be showing up and presenting themselves out in the world to be okay okay well with that being said am i focusing on the wrong area i mean can i lift this weight off of my shoulder trying to come up with this visual who i have no idea who they are um no or is I that something i still need to be concerned with a little bit you do you do okay. i think it's a good okay. starting point i just don't think you should um you don't have to put as much effort or energy into that as much because once you have an idea i think the way to flush it out is okay but when you have you know whatever the because i see people name their avatars they named them mariah or whatever i think sally hansen has like an avatar mary or something i'm just reading like they really? have an actual I, client I didn't avatar know that. okay <laughs> yes okay or maybe it's Anne or something, it's actual name, it's a woman, and they actually have it all fleshed out, they share it with all the key stakeholders, they share it with all the top, um, you know, hierarchies within their system, um, and it's like actual who they look to service, um, so I say it's good to have that, but then like, well, psychologically, what does Mariah really want, like, what else is going on in her role that's causing her to think the way that she's thinking, like, what else is in her environment, like, if she has a candle lit right here, and if I were, like, in my home right now to have a candle lit before I weren't traveling, right. <laughs> but why do I have that there, like, what does that mean to me, like, what significance is, am I deriving from having that candle here, is it helping me relax, is it, help, is it helping me create a certain energy so I can show up a certain way, like, mm -hmm. it's those little pieces of, like, that behind the scenes stuff that people typically don't share because for whatever reason people may be a little bit afraid to be vulnerable i know we live in a space where vulnerability people are you know working through that and how they're comfortable with it sure. um, but i feel like that's where you're going to really speak to somebody and you get those like how does that person know that you know those moments like it's what happened to you too Dwayne. like you've been out somewhere and it's like how did you know i liked this or how did you know that that was something that you know what i mean it's those little yeah. things and that's really helped you form those bonds and those connections that really form those lifetime audience building things that I, i'm so passionate about because when you're speaking to people from a place of stuff that they probably would rather you not know and i mean right. in a good way yeah it's like oh you paid attention to me you care and then that's how you're, you're able to really further that conversation and build that relationship over the long haul Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Speaking of paying attention, did I read uh, that you, um, you um, had a degree in uh, psychology or something like that? Did you? <laughs> no, I've studied psychology. You psychology. studied it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I knew there was something, especially with all of this psychographics <laughs> going on. I Okay, so that's that's where a lot of that comes into play. Yeah, I studied psychology, I studied sociology, and I recently, for the past two years, I've been studying heavily NLP, 
like okay. um, hypnosis. Yeah, um, yeah. And just, I've just been fascinated with how the human brain works really more so than anything. I'm just really just enamored with like the massive potential we have like unlocked a lot of the times within our own human capital. And I'm just, I'm just excited to learn more and to dive deeper and how I can just be of service to help other people get what they want in life. And if I can help them go get over their mental hurdles, that's, you know, that's a win for me. Yeah, as as it is for them as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now you see you going down the psychological rabbit hole. You once again <laughs> you're you you we're right in sync. Uh, one of the main things or that I that I use, uh, especially you know if I'm going through a bad time or whatever, is um, how the brain works. Back to what you were saying in terms of your, your negative thoughts and the fact that your negative thoughts are like um, are like a stream or a creek. Those negative thoughts continue to create that path. And that's why it's so easy to go negative because those pathways and those neurons have already created those pathways in your in your brain. Be positive and develop those paths. Mm -hmm. And I literally have studied that as well. So it's just kind of interesting that you know you get into you get into all of this and come yeah. back to the filmmaking and the writing and the that's mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting. But yeah. it's very mm -hmm. true, very, very true. true. Very true. And speaking of um, the mind, are you are you so much into it that you can actually hypnotize someone? Have you taken it to that level yet? Or are we still working that out? Where do you stand? Um, only in the sense of when I have an understanding if there's like a blockage there and there's something that I can do within my level of persuasion to help them see that they do have control. So to speak to what you said before, like, it's really easy, like you said, to go down the path that is more carved out. So like I go hiking a lot, as an example, it's easy for me just to walk the same path that probably a thousand people have walked because it's very prominent. You know, I don't have to worry about, am I going to fall Absolutely. and twist Absolutely. my ankle? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit scarier to go down the path that's like, okay, there's real no clear pathway. Can I walk here? Is it safe? Right, it's totally right. different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even to quote Dr. Joe Dispenza, I've been rereading his book for like the fourth or fifth time now, um, yeah. Break, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Um, there's a passage that speaks about negativity and how it's really like a chemical addiction. Like you can chemically yeah. become addicted to certain, right. you know, stimuli and it could be negative. That cortisol in your, in your body flowing through and yeah, all of that. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're right about that. Yeah, that's um, it's real interesting. Like I said, I I could I could nerd out right with you to be I quite could honest with you. <laughs> I could too. <laughs> I could definitely go there with you. Um, so we're not snapping our fingers and come out of it. No, and, no, no. Uh, we're, we're not. We're not doing yeah. that. Yeah, I'm all about self activation. I want to give the power back to the person that it deserves to be in, which is you as, you know, the client, consumer, the person, the human, the friend, the whatever you are. Um, I always want to bring it back to, okay, well, what do you, you know, what do you want? Okay, well, why aren't you there yet? What's well, been getting in the way? Okay, well, how do we move this around? Like, how do we shift that? Okay, well, how can you reframe that? Like, I'm more about like, just giving you the tools and you just going out there and be being empowered. Like, I'm going to teach you how to fish so you can go fish for the rest of your life. I don't want you to be dependent on me. I want to get you what you need to, for you can go, so you can go be successful. Right. I think that's great. I think that's great. So having said all of that, do you get into, and again, I'm just, you know, trying to figure it all out. I so work with me for a minute. <laughs> Do you uh do you get into like click funnels and all of this other stuff that I'm finding out about and am am desperately trying to learn on the fly? We do because obviously we have to have a conversion. 
So the conversation right. may just be the starting point, the emotional connection, you know, just being able to catch someone's attention. We know like attention is like at an all time split, like everyone's vying for your attention. Yeah, yeah. Um, so once the attention has actually been directed towards you and there has been somewhat of, even if it's on a micro level, a micro, you know, commitment, I, I if you will. So say someone's clicked on your thing, on your ad, on your right. landing page. You yeah. do want to be able to have like a nice seamless way to, for them to be able to take that next step so yeah funnel your funnel is definitely a, a part of it that we work on with you if that's something that you know you need help with because it just further you know furthers a conversation towards the desired result for both parties okay okay is it safe to say that where i am currently uh click funnels is a little bit maybe down the road for me because i'm not I'm not even selling anything, honestly. I'm just trying to put out information that will help others, quite honestly. Yeah. I mean, that's really my main motivation. My only motivation mm -hmm. is to, uh, yeah. yeah, do that. Yeah, I would say for you, probably you wouldn't want to need, you wouldn't need to go down that route quite yet. I would just yeah. suggest you to start up something that's just starting an email list and it's getting just, just starting up, um, you know, uh, I have a couple email service providers I could recommend and you could just sign up with one of them, create something of value that you know that your audience would want and just mm -hmm. offer that in exchange for their email and then just continue that conversation through email newsletters. Outside of YouTube, are there any other uh, platforms that you work with or is YouTube the one that you specialize in most because of the, the obvious visual connection or what's that about? Yeah, no, YouTube is, is pretty much the primary one. Um, I know there's other ways to, you know, draw on attention and like have like micro content. So you want to like cut down like a long, long form content is really my thing. So long form content really performs the best on YouTube. You yeah. don't really go to Instagram to watch a 12 minute video. Um, right. So right. yeah, YouTube is really where it's at with me. Okay. Okay. I see. Getting back to the writing part. How did you get into that? Um, gosh, like, I feel like it's just been a dream of mine since I was a little girl. Um, I right remember, alongside the dancing. Yeah, I was just okay. like being an artist, I guess, in, in a sense, was just like always like my thing. But I feel like the writing really solidified in my mind, I think somewhere around the time of like, middle school, um, where we have career day. And so my mom actually, I don't even know how she did this. Um, she worked magic that she always does and we live in san diego and so she called the nickelodeon studios and got a hold of the producers and the director and like the whole production company and convinced them to let me come up there for my career day because she knew that i wanted to be a writer and so she wanted me to experience live network television not live network television but, but like a television series and so she got in touch with the producers of my very favorite show on Nickelodeon that I watched faithfully. And so I got to go out there and be on set for the whole day and meet the cast, meet the crew, get experience, like wow. how all that works. And I came wow. home with the script and all the audience, all, I mean, the cast members signed it and everything. And oh, that's great. I came home that night and I remember I was just like buzzed with energy and I wrote my very first like television script as much as I could being a kid back then. I didn't really sure, know like sure. what to really it. do, but I, get I did. It. I get it. <laughs> but that got it started though. Yeah. I got it started. And you've always sort of enjoyed writing anyway, I take it. Were you into writing poetry or, you know, a journal? Journals. Like diary, okay. Journal. You would do yeah. your journals and your diary. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Mom's got a she's got some moxie a little bit, huh? She called the <laughs> studio. She My did. baby wants to do a career day at Sony. <laughs> she did. She did. I don't know how she wow. did it, but she made it happen. So right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. That's great. Is that was that day also maybe the day that you sort of being on set decided that you wanted to have a piece of that as well? Or, yeah. or did that come later? No, that was really the day because I mean, typically that would have been a day I would have been like, you know, in a boring classroom. Like I just, you sure. know, school was kind of boring to me. It was like, oh, so like unimaginative. This is not fun. And right, right. I mean, the contrast that with like going out there on a weekday and 
this is what they were doing at the times that I would typically versus what school. you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is what I need to be doing. <laughs> this is where I want to be. I got you. I got you. Yeah, well that now that sounds that sounds great. Uh I think your story is fascinating, honestly. Um is there anything else that comes to mind that uh you might be able to enlighten the viewers with or the listeners with, you know, just some of that that I uh, you know, love, you know, <laughs> anything you can contribute. Yeah, I would just say, you know, just don't be afraid to share the vulnerable side of like your story. Like don't, I'm not saying like you gotta put all your business out there, but the part that's gonna really stand apart in the crowd of whatever industry you're in and what's gonna really, you know, be unique is only what you can do. And so right. look at the marketplace and see where are the gaps that only you can fill and only the way that you're able to do it. Mm. I like that. I like that. And, and to your point, vulnerability is so important. You know, it's, it's really what allows us to feed off of one another, really. Well, I, with that being said, um, I don't know if I, I, I'm almost one of like, well, what else, I, what else do you have? For <laughs> but, <laughs> but it seems like we, we may have covered, you know, your um, your YouTube, and just to sort of recap, your uh, your writing, uh, the importance of writing visually, telling stories, not just, you know, the regular stuff that you read on a about to page, mm -hmm. um, sharing your vulnerabilities, and then you've got all the uh, the YouTube. Uh, things that you also bring to the table that you, you know, sort of discussed as well. Um, I will definitely be contacting you, you know, for obvious reasons. I just, you know, need to try and get my weight up, quite honestly. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, hey, that that's a vulnerability on my part, right? I'm, I'm sharing. There you go. So, um <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, I greatly appreciate you um, coming on today. Uh, can you can you uh, give where you can be found, or you know the Lehman and the this and the that and the, you know, the whole bit? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, our company website it's LehmanCreativeGroup.com, and I actually have a Magic of Visual Storytelling Masterclass available. It'll be available here pretty soon. Um, but if you'd like first access, you can opt in to join our creative community email list. And it's right on the website. And I'll be able to, when I, when I have it ready, I'll be able to send that out. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's all that, you know, if you want to learn more about visual storytelling, learn more about visuals, videos, all that good stuff, that's probably one of the very best places to start. And it's going to go website. Working the website yeah um okay. and then the master class will just be a really good working capital on like making this make sense because i know it's a lot and it can be kind of overwhelming like what do you mean i just i need to be vulnerable i have to show up in video like i have to like there's ways to make it work and how it can make sense not only for yourself as a business but as your, as the clients and the customers and consumers and the audience you're hoping to build and form relationships with okay okay so it's uh layman creative is group. it like group.com group mm -hmm. okay and it's the same it's also layman creative uh at instagram as well right yeah uh, instagram i believe it's layman two underscores creative because i think somebody else had the name so i had to be creative <laughs> okay there we <laughs> go instagram. okay so layman two creative layman two underscores and then oh yeah. oh yeah <laughs> Double right. underscore. Yeah, work with me. Work with me, Aya. Okay, that sounds like we good. Said, we said earlier, technology, technology and analog. It's just digital analog. Like. Listen, well, Make it I, work. yeah, I'm, I'm definitely analog. <laughs> I'm, I'm there with you, trust me. I'm like, like I'm like 80-20 with stuff I do. Like, I'm not all the way full in with anything. I'm like 80-20, so I'm definitely more... 80 analog 20 digital because there's some greatness with, with digital but analog i'm not going to leave it behind so right right last question are you from hawaii 
I'm not from Hawaii, but I was born in Guam and I have a lot of family there. But okay. yeah, I do have my Polynesian uh, Filipino got, roots. Got a little background yeah. work in a little bit. Yeah, I do. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, and thank you. Um, I will definitely be following up with you, okay? Okay, I look forward to it. All right, well, you take care of yourself. All right, you too. Thank you. All righty, bye bye.